today, I'm making the exhaust to this. Guys, so first round of mods, well not mods, more like repairs are done, wheel bearings are done, um, done a couple of things, there's still a lot more to go. We're going to be doing a rear diff locker, ARB, um, air locker, so stay tuned for that, a full rear end rebuild in detail, so that should help a lot of you guys out there. Um, I've done the same with Ben on his Prado, um, but he hasn't released the video yet because he's just plain old lazy like usual. No, he's actually pretty strapped for time, like me. but. Um, I want to get this thing done and running so we can take it on the trails and start doing some camping and building it up further. So what I've got to do is build a good exhaust. Essentially I'm going to turn all these boxes of goodies into hopefully done a little bit of a diagram here. So sorry, I should just turn this way. Start up in front of the car, turbo comes down, V-band across here and it'll snake under the highest part of the tail shaft and across through a muffler and then out the tailpipe V-band there so if I don't like the sound of it with the muffler I can just make another straight pipe here and whack it on the V-band. So I'll show you guys what's inside these boxes. So first up obviously a turbo dump flange. So this is a 12mm mild steel laser cut one from MTQ. This was about 50 odd bucks. Um, so that's the first step obviously. I guess I'll work from the top down, see I've got to get rid of these boxes to get the ones below. So in here I have got a exhaust cutout valve. This is the two and a half inch one, only because I didn't have the three inch one. And it also doesn't need to be three inch. It's actually quite a heavy duty bit of kit. That's pretty nice actually. So you've probably seen that on Reese's 60, we put one of these on. If not, I'll put the video link up in the top right corner for you guys. Um, but yeah, this will basically be able to open up after the dump pipe and sound like a truck. And then it's got the control box. Um, basically the exact same as a Varex muffler, which I also run on my other two street slash race cars. Got three three inch V-bands. Um, these are, in my opinion, the only flange to use. Those bolt flanges with gaskets are so old technology. And if you are buying V-bands, Try and get the ones with a stepped edge so they're a locating one as you can see male female they fit together as long as you can weld properly and don't warp them they are the greatest thing ever no gaskets required uh, we've got another box of goodies so i've got all of my mandrel bends so some 45s and some 90s i'm going mild steel on this because it is somewhat you know budget build uh, mild steel works really well I always spray it with this stuff, VHD flame proof paint. This is a really, really durable coating and it also makes it look nice and stealthy. Also stops it rusting and for those guys who know me, I absolutely hate rusty car components. I'm gonna have to kind of compromise on this car because it just comes with the territory, but thankfully I don't really care that much about this car. It's more of a basher, but it still needs to be reliable and sound good and also look good. So that's that box. Next box, what do we got here? Uh, three inch flex bellow, very important in a exhaust system, need to have somewhere for it to flex. Uh, oh, these aren't for this car, this is to build another one of my BBG equal length headers for my uh, Subaru. So that's another project. And we've got some more mandrels. And then there's also three meters of straight pipe there. So. I'm gonna cut all that up, weld it all up. I don't know how I'm gonna set this video up yet. Oh wait, I forgot one more thing. Oh. And yes, there is a muffler. It needs to be somewhat tame. So this is a three inch in and out um, offset. So I got that just for um, packaging. It might come in handy. So maybe see it is straight through but it's got the perforated core um, so that should quieten it down enough I'll try and document this I won't really go into like a how-to like I normally do it's pretty straightforward if you are into fabricating um, I'll try set my GoPro up and follow some certain stages and everything but 
Stay along for the ride and we'll see how this thing sounds when it's finally done. Hopefully not too long. How's this for a restrictive POS? Look at all those tight bloody shit tying guns. Look at the size of this pipe, man, seriously. This thing is going to breathe like a queen. Okay, so the first challenge, uh, this is always the way with these kind of turbos. Um, basically you've got to make this bit of three inch pipe fit this odd shaped flange, as you can see. So I've marked my orientation, over the set line. So that is up like that. So I'm just going to keep squashing this in the vise and then once it's pretty close, I'll probably just start tack welding it and then bashing it around and um, hopefully I can do this fairly easily and uh, in a pretty time effective manner because when I did this on Reese 60 this took a lot of time because it was a real weird shaped flange on the um, 2860 or whatever it was so let's go and do this. So I reckon a lot of the time this is one of the hardest bits of an exhaust build on such a small turbo with such a this one's not as bad. What I'm going to do here is kind of just get the ball pane and hopefully just push that out to the edge. And then around this side, I think I'll probably just put a slit in it, fold that out, fold that out, then just infill a little triangle. All right guys, so uh, three hours later, and we've got a finished product. So, it's turned out pretty good. So yeah, as you can see, I've high flowed the back out of it. That should flow pretty well. Definitely a lot better than the uh, factory one. So what I ended up doing on this section where the pipe was short, if you recall, um, I basically just built up weld. So it kind of worked out all right. It doesn't look the best, but this is hidden down underneath. Um, I could not, really couldn't be bothered cutting a little slither in there and fixing it up, so. Next up, I'm just going to bring this uh, down and kind of out through this opening here. So it'll run up tight there. And it'll go across under the tail shaft and then out this way. Put a muffler up in here somewhere. And then basically just a little bit of a straight pipe out the back with the old uh, 90 degree dump. and. Uh, that's us.
So this is where I'm at. The V-band, got this all welded up. I'm at the stage where it's about to come back across the car. This is what I've developed. Basically an 8mm bolt through there with a lock nut there. I've got an old uh, poly bush that I've cut in half. A couple of uh, big wide mud flap washers. And basically that will somewhat solid mount my exhaust into a nice spot. It's not going to move around. And it's also insulated. So we've got the insulation of the bushes and then we've also got the insulation of the um, chassis to body bushes slash mounts. So I'm going to hold this up, basically tack weld it in place, take it off, fully weld it and this section is now supported then we'll move on to the next bit before I got to go home and go out for dinner. That's all in and done. You can see the old hangers up there. Nice sexy V-band. I'm pretty happy with this exhaust so far. Been tagged up. So it's time to set up the exhaust cutout. So this is a two and a half inch. Um, basically you're gonna splice it in somewhere like that. I'm going to go now and basically do a big slash cut on this so that can pretty much splice onto there and um, I guess I'll just track down a 90 degree elbow that will just turn down I guess uh, that goes onto this and I've just realised it's been such a long time since I've used any two and a half inch pipe because everything's three inch plus with high power or, or just regular turbo cars so I don't have anything in the stockpile anymore, so I'll have to go find some. Right, so you can see here, after a little bit of uh, sculpting, it's pretty much ready to weld on. As you can see, it's kind of on an offset. Um, and yeah, it actually seems to be a really well built cutout valve. This only cost me about a hundred bucks. Two and a half inch, really solid duty. Um, even what I like about this is the, the motor is actually gasketed to this housing here so it will avoid dirt getting in there and the whole thing is basically sealed off with a box so that's really good for off-roading um, you can see a bit of the gasket in there so I'm really happy with this I think it will last well um, yeah I'll get this all tacked up and uh, see how it sounds I guess 
Alright guys, so Brady's joined me. It's a bit of a hard starter actually, so. Let's see how we go. Blow the fuck out of it. It's off. That's pretty quiet as it is. Yeah. You'd have to drive it to get a good taste of it, though. Give it a bit of a rev. Stay in there, mate. <laughs> Doesn't sound as cool as it did before, but... Not as recently? Nah. Is it... <laughs> <laughs> nah, valve's closed. So we got the uh, remote temporarily hooked up. It's actually the exact same as a Varex, so... Give it a rev without. I think once that muffler's on there, that'll be pretty tame. That's what I'm saying, like, three inch stroke pipe is not loud. So Brett's just temporarily holding that there. So. Oh man, that's heaps good. I didn't film this, sorry. Um, you know, it's one of those days where you've just done a full day at work and you just want to get in and get some shit done. So I apologize for that, but you can see here I've kind of, I had this exhaust mount from one of my other cars, which I've kind of topped up, changed, um, nut inserted, a couple of M6 bolts into the rail there. And then you saw my 10 mil rod and a like concave nut that I found, which worked perfectly. So this is all done. Um, so I'm going to go and pull this all off, wire brush it, clean it down with some thinners or brake cleaner or whatever I've got lying around, give it a spray, hang it up, let it dry, we'll chuck it back on the car, we'll uh, do the baking procedure, it's like you got to let the car idle etc etc um, to bake the paint if you're not doing it in the oven which this is, obviously isn't going to fit in an oven and yeah so uh, stay tuned. on the ground. Yeah, I'll dumpy poo and then I'll put a, a wide band bung about there. Alright guys, so one thing I just thought of um, while that exhaust paint is drying. Um, basically what the plan is, we're gonna basically baseline dyno this car in its current form. 
but when we do that we actually want to have an EGT reading and also an AFR reading so I've put the uh, wideband bung in the dump but I'm going to tap a um, pyro or EGT sensor in the manifold so it's very important to go pre-turbo because uh, things I'll, I'll get to, uh, Ben to explain it properly when we're actually on the dyno doing this but basically if you're doing it post turbo you don't know what's going on before the turbo how much heat the turbo is pulling out of that charge you know you can you can tune safely and that's fine but if you're really kind of pushing things to right right on the limit um, you obviously want to know what that EGT is before the turbo because that's obviously the hottest part that's what's going to get cooked and that's what's coming out of the motor or engine um, so what I'm going to do is before I put the dump pipe back on I'm going to pull the turbo off and the manifold off tap the bung if I can find somewhere to put it if not I've got an eighth inch MPT weld on which I can weld that on and um, might even give that a bit of a spray with some ceramic black paint as well but hopefully not another can of worms as you can see here very very oily as per usual it does have a catch can but it is quite a piece of shit um, I'm going to obviously do a better catch can than that, put some better baffles in. Um, even so, I'm not going to run it back into the intake, as you can see there, because no matter what, you just really can't stop all the blow-by. Uh, well, I know I definitely haven't been able to anyway in the past, so I've given all the bolts a bit of a hit with some uh, penetrating oil. So I'm going to let them sit, keep alternating between spraying, and then also I'll come and hopefully pull this off without opening up too big a can of worms. Everything looks somewhat okay, so we'll see. Oh, fuck, man. So for you guys, it's literally like this, but uh, for me, another week has passed since I actually finished the exhaust. I've gone full circle, pulled the manifold off, turbo off, painted shit, cleaned shit, as you do. Um, but now it's finally time to put the exhaust on. So um, if you want to check out how to do a um, EGT probe for your 2L um, or your EGI delete for the 2L, um, you can check those videos out, which I was kind of shooting between this. Obviously I couldn't put the exhaust on with the turbo and the manifold off, but that's all back on now. Um, so now I'm going to put this dump on and the mid pipe, rear pipe, and then I think I'm going to go home for the night. Fuck. But anyway, I'll show you guys a cool little trick before I put this on the car for good, hopefully. Alright guys, so there's the exhaust. It's actually kind of been sprayed by a lot of degreaser, which is, you know... This thing is so fucking dirty. It's going to take me forever to clean it up to my standards, but uh, we'll get there in the end. So, there you go, there's a mid pipe. All ceramic coated. Uh, I've got the old exhaust cut out there. Dump pipe, put my O2 sensor bung welded there. Well, as you can see, hopefully it actually fits in the car. I did a quick look, but it wasn't as thorough as I should have been. And then mid pipe, I mean uh, rear pipe, actually, yeah, rear pipe here. And what I've got here is a nifty little trick that I've come up with. So I've kind of customised these split pins. Now we're just going to drop in here, like so. Spread those tangs out. And that's basically going to stop the rubber hanger from slipping off. Because if you're like me, um, getting the rubber hangers off with the actual um, you know, swaged end on it is a real pain in the ass, especially when they're a bit worn and weathered. So. I should do that. Anyway, I'm going to put this camera down and chuck the exhaust on. Alrighty. Okie doke. And I've got my little cutout remote. It's a new shared launch sequence. On the reds. Pretty low. Does this feel familiar? The 100,000 attempted starts in the Forester? Feels very, very familiar. The view's the same. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen uh, my uh, hectic Forester over there, which most of you probably aren't interested in because you probably love Forby so much, but it actually is a four-wheel drive, but anyway. Although it's uh, mid after it's 3 p.m. instead of 3 a.m. Yeah, we've so. got a bit smarter. 
All right, let's go. All right. I can't wait to tidy all this messy shit up. What do you reckon? Sounds good. It's good. Ben loves a quiet exhaust. I do, and this is this is pretty good, you know. Open the thingo. Now we get some turbo. More spool. Give it a hit. bake on the paint. Yeah, and then um, it revs pretty decently too for a diesel. Yeah. That's a good thing about a small displacement force on that. So we'll see if we can push that into the five. <laughs> I reckon we can. We'll blow it up trying. Can't wait to find out. Yeah. So yeah guys, we've got some mad plans for this. So. It's actually really nice. Actually Ben was just, we were just discussing another plan to uh, up the fueling without actually changing the pump. So we'll I'll let you guys in on that a bit later on, but Ben's got all kinds of cool ideas <sighs> up his sleeve when it comes to That's boosting it. these, but yeah, oh, that's that wicked. Good. I can't wait to finally finish the diff so we can actually take it for a drive. Yes. See how it sounds under some load and see how it drives. Yeah, so, so once you get all the instrumentation up, EGT yeah. gauges. EGTs are ready to hook up. It really pisses me off how they give you like these crappy little connectors. Yeah, like, pretty shit. They snap off straight away. At least that'll be inside the cabin, I think. Yeah. The yeah, that's right. All right, let's keep plodding on with some other more important stuff. <laughs> 